Hello, everyone. Um, it's just a true uh, pleasure to be here at, uh, at TEDx, my God, Winnipeg. So um, I want to thank all of TEDx for uh, inviting us. And I want to thank uh, all of us, that, uh, all of the team that uh, built the car and got it uh, in the lobby. So um, I'm going to start here. Today I'm going to talk about the rational car for the next century. Now, design is a group activity. Um, I work in a, in a, with people that I've pretty well known my whole career, um, and I would say that they're the best in designers in the world. Today, I'm going to talk about the energy, a car, and the trips that we take. The trip I want you to visualize is, you know, when we run out of milk, and, you know, you've got your cereal board and coffee, and you kind of, damn, you know, there's no milk, so you run out to the, to the um, convenience store. Whether that, so whether you're living in the country or in the city, that's a trip, and that's a very typical trip. Matter of fact, cars do lots of these trips. And if you, um, if you have a big car, uh, you're going to use about this much energy per day on those kind of trips. And if you have a mid-sized car, you're going to use about this much energy on those trips. And... Uh, if you ever buy our car one day, you'd use about this much energy. All right? So, um, and you can also plug it into uh, any ordinary wall outlet. All right. Now, cities have um, grow- had about 100 years growing up with the car. So everything's really spread out. And um, it's about a billion people that drive cars now. And before centuries end, it'll be 2 billion. So that's a lot of cars. And um, they all kind of run on non-renewable energy. Uh, there's a lot of talk about sustainable transportation, but, uh, <laughs> but the only real sustainable transportation is animals, is horses. Um, and, and all animals, actually, because they've been wandering on the planet for a long time. And the human equivalent to that is uh, cycling and walking. So that's the true, uh, the, you know, the absolute superb transportation system for sustainable cities. And um, it's pleasant, and it, uh, it doesn't damage the environment. So in a weird kind of way, a car of the future, or for this century, needs to promote walking and cycling in cities. So we have to kind of rethink uh, personal transportation right from fundamentals. And this is not going to be rocket science, okay? So 15 years ago, I had an idea. Now, I don't want to say this was a great idea. It was just an idea. And I was concerned about um, the, the sort of, um, well, the problems that face us that are sort of um, slow in building up because we don't pay too much attention to those. And I was worried about the kind of world we would leave our children and their children, their children. And I thought as an adult, you know, as an adult, uh, we should do something when we're faced with this information of, um, of what might happen in the future. So here's the project in a nutshell. Some sunlight hits a um, piece of land, might have a garage on it, and we use that energy to just drive around. So we pick up that sunlight energy using solar panels, wind turbines, hydro dams, and biofuels, such as ethanol. Now, you'd think this would be easy, but it's really, really difficult. And you can see this uh, just simply enough by looking at solar airplanes compared to real passenger aircraft. You can see the difference. (laughs) And you can really see the difference, uh, like solar boats. (laughs) You know, solar boats just aren't like real boats, right? And the solar racers, I mean, you would never get that liter of milk in a car like that. (laughs) So they're just not real cars. So this is very discouraging when you think about this. But uh, just consider this for a moment. Um, Humans use about this much energy per year in the whole world. And available from sunlight is this much energy. So there is lots of energy in sunlight. And um, it's uh, the potential for this clean energy source is actually astronomical. So, for the moment, just imagine a little garage like this. Car goes in and out. The technology inside the garage looks something like this. And if you could make this work, 
it would be like winning fuel for life. <laughs> <Hoo -hoo! laughs> I mean, it would, it would be fantastic, wouldn't it? And it would be so democratic because this sunlight energy sort of lands at the doorstep of every woman, man, and child on the planet. Okay, so our focus was the design of the car, but we kind of knew, we didn't have any preconceived ideas of what the car would look like, but we knew it wouldn't look like a gas car. And uh, all we had, we didn't have much money, we had a bit of time, and um, we had a goal. And uh, so here it is. So our goal was to create the greenest car in the world and put one in every driveway in the world. Now, I live in a province um, with 100,000 natural lakes, and where in the summer everybody goes camping into the cottage. I wanted to show the boys the, the countryside, so about 15 years ago I bought this thing, an old motorhome. Now, what I didn't realize is that the... <laughs> what I didn't realize is the you know, I'm trying to show the boys, you know, the young boys, uh, the environment, and I'm kind of decimating the environment. <laughs> because here's a, here's a, here's a machine that, that, you know, needs oil like a fish needs water. <laughs> okay. So, I tried, for 15 years I tried making this car greener, and, it, it, and it, I failed completely. <laughs> so, lucky for you and me and the planet, you know, it's sitting in a field right now. But um, what I learned, why I mentioned the motorhome is uh, I learned an enormous amount, and I learned that you, you, you must start from scratch. <laughs> okay, now I'm, I'm a little touchy about bad design like the motorhome because I'm a product design engineer. Um, I, uh, I've been at it quite a while. Um, I know what drafting boards are. <laughs> and my background is farm equipment and uh, intercity and city buses. And uh, I've always worked on new designs, so I've had a few patents, and I was lucky enough to work on some award-winning projects. And it's a real pleasure for me uh, to, to see machinery I've worked on out there still working in the messy real world. So, and as I get older, you know, these machines have been working 30 plus years. Now, I always wanted to design cars, so I became a mechanical engineer, designed this in the energy crisis of the 70s. And um, I, I was always into energy efficiency. My brother was a geologist. And he introduced me to this man, which was very important to my uh, um, growth. Ian McCarg is the father of ecological design. This man is the key to sustainability. So I started to design differently. I designed bicycles and water bicycles. I designed pedal-powered things that went in elevated tunnels. And then uh, actually designed this PRT system, mass transit system, that's probably still the most energy efficient uh, ever conceived. And this was the start of this car. And uh, we called it Irby because uh, it's an urban electric car, and we thought that every urban center would benefit from a car like this. Now let me talk a bit about car design. Now, car design is way, way more difficult than tractors and buses. And here's why. Cars are full of fantasy and style. Cars are all about big grills. Cars are all about exhaust pipes. You know, the more the, more, the better. So, 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 so this, is, this is a really good car. And, and this, this would be even better. <laughs> so, and we're all, we're all about... Uh, oh, sorry. We're all about um, buying cars for reserve capacity. You know, we like to have the ability to, to take everything with us. So we like to think we travel like this, but we actually travel like this. You know, stuck in traffic lots of times by ourselves. 
So I challenge you to think of something completely opposite to the typical car. Think of uh, this uh, Irby as perhaps the Model T of the 21st century, or perhaps the Volkswagen Beetle of the 21st century, but with emissions and, and uh, safety enhanced. These were very frugal cars that, that had a worldwide popularity. And now I'm going to show you the fundamental concept uh, within Irby, and I don't know if you're ready for this, but this sort of encapsulates uh, the idea behind Irby. Okay. Now, this may look rather odd. As a matter of fact, it probably looks impossible. But, uh, to, you know, to use less dog in a dog sled. But uh, the key to this is actually to redesign the dog sled, to get rid of all excess, and to really focus on energy efficiency. So instead of dogs, I like to think of horse bar, because we all know, sort of, uh, uh, people that work with horses certainly know of the power in a horse. So think of this car. This is a very, one of the smallest cars you can buy. It has a 68 horsepower engine. If uh, we drew this like it was in the old days, it would look something like this. Now, who would put 68 horses in front of a wagon? I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and, and, and you wouldn't find a field big enough uh, to, to, to feed it, so you'd have to you know, put some oil in there. Now... Now, when you analyze the trips of this wagon, what you find is this, that the horses in red are hardly ever used during the trip. So they might as well, you know, be on the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you analyze this, this trip, and I'm being quite serious here, eh? you know this. <laughs> but if you analyze this trip, then you'll find the horses in red are actually just pulling the horses around, or the weight of the horses in the wagon. Yeah? So if you leave all the horses you don't need behind, what you end up with is this. And that's Irby. Now, maybe one, eight horse park. But one day, maybe we'll have, um, you know, we'll get back to this, which is a, even more reasonable. But for now, this is what Irby looks like. And we think that uh, one day, all cars will look like this because this shape honors the physics of the problem. So, I'm supposed to unveil this now. <laughs> yeah, so there it is. <laughs> and there's a bigger version in the lobby. <laughs> okay, and what's inside of Irby, just uh, have a look at this. Two people sitting one the driver. We, sh we cover those people with the most aerodynamic body we can think of. It has a pointed tail. We truncate the tail uh, to make it more practical. We add three wheels because we don't need the fourth wheel. We make the rear wheel steering so that the underneath of the car is com stays completely aerodynamic. We power the two front wheels with some electric motors. We put the batteries in the right place to get a nice uh, balance to the vehicle. And we add a small little internal combustion engine for emergencies and for on the highway. And when you add that all together, it looks something like this. And what's the big deal? Well, on average, a car like this would get, a, you know, would get about, a traditional car would use about eight times more energy than Irby. And what that means is that um, if you power these cars with renewables, uh, like hydro dams and, and all that kind of stuff, it would look like this. You'd need this many facilities and uh, to power all the cars in, in our province, uh, traditional cars. And with Irby, you just need these facilities to power all the cars in the province if they were Irby's. And these exist today in our province. So is that a big deal? Yeah, that's a big deal. Because <laughs> this is practical, yeah. <laughs> now, our sponsor said that uh, we were kind of a funny group because we're trying to design this uh, simple car uh, using the latest high-tech tools. So let me just show you chronologically what we did here. First, we did a whole bunch of calculations. That's what engineers tend to do. And then we wrote a technical paper that was presented at the Automotive World Congress. Then we uh, did CAD uh, design. Then we built a wooden car just to see if everything would fit, and some people thought we were making a wooden car. <laughs> 
but it's a metal car. <laughs> so, so this is the metal car and, uh, that we used as a test bed. And, uh, we, and we got everything proven, kind of proven to our satisfaction, including the rear steering. Then we sculptured the body traditionally out of clay, then scanned the body into the computer. And then once we had the body in the computer, we could do aerodynamic simulation. And this number, CD of 0 0.15, is a magnificent number. <laughs> yes, it is. And, uh, and it reduces the resistance dramatically. It's about half of what it is on traditional cars. And then one of our great sponsors um, you know, made the model out of 3D printing. 3D printed this model, which is very common commonly done nowadays. Uh, and then with the same computer files, we 3D printed the, the large body, which is quite something to do. And there you can see the body coming together. We also got some patents going, and we got some uh, crash simulation going because we want to, you know, Irby to be safe and have sort of race car safety built in. We're working on the interior for the second prototype. And a kind of a neat thing happened. You know, because when you work at a, something like this for such a long time, you kind of get used to this stuff, and then it kind of becomes obvious, and then you kind of want, you want to buy one yourself. <laughs> so, so we have standing orders for 12 of these things from all the people that, that worked on it. <laughs> and, uh, and we think that might grow a little bit, because... Uh, if people in the world want a rational automobile, something like this, that's low energy, low impact, and long life. And then there's this report uh, out of Australia, and it, it really says um, that, that converting the traditional car to electricity and all that just really won't work. We just have to get down to using less energy. So it kind of points to something, a solution, something like herb. So now I'm going to end just by telling you what I've learned from this, uh, this fascinating project, actually. I don't think uh, there's any abundance and free energy. I think uh, there's a price to be paid either now or in the future um, uh, for, for any kind of wasting of energy. So I treat energy as extremely precious, and I try not to waste anything. I do think that there's so much energy in sunlight that uh, it may look impossible to use sunlight energy, but if you kind of keep at it, uh, it becomes possible. And, uh, and then there's enough energy there to keep us going for a long time. And as far as transportation goes, and the car specifically, I use horsepower as my guide. And the, the true progress is when you have less horsepower, not more. I use nature as my teacher. And I think that as a you know, modern civilization, we should sort of capture the thermals of energy that come our way and uh, let our imagination uh, take wing. And then a really kind of pleasant and sweet thing happened when I was sort of made the commitment to do something about the future. Um, what I noticed was that my kids noticed. And then I noticed that their friends noticed too. And uh, so sort of action uh, speaks louder than words is what I've learned here. So I hope you um, uh, find this project uh, kind of interesting and um, uh, that I hope that you, uh, I, I support you in your quest for sustainability, sustainability and uh, um, in our search for a better tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you.